What do you do when you are playing in a game that has no finish line? There's no such thing as winning charity. There's no such thing as winning business. But when we listen to the language of too many leaders, they don't know the game they're in. They talk about being number one, being the best or beating the competition. But the problem is there's no such thing. When we play in an infinite game with a finite mindset, there's a few very predictable and consistent outcomes. The decline of trust, the decline of cooperation, and the decline of innovation, all of which lead to suffering and the ultimate demise of the organization. If we are to succeed and thrive in the infinite game, we have to learn to play with an infinite mindset. So many of the pressures on us these days are to play with a finite mindset. We're being pushed constantly, daily, by outside forces or internal incentive structures to focus exclusively on the quarter or the year, often at the expense of the long term, often at the expense of the health of the organization itself. It takes tremendous courage to play with an infinite mindset, to set out every day to advance something bigger than ourselves, to take care of the teams around us because we know that it's the people that will ensure the longevity of the organization. At the end of the day, the more we believe in the infinite mindset and the more that we understand that the mindset with which we're playing is actually bad for the organization and bad for us, it hurts our enjoyment of work, believe it or not. The more courage we're able to have to withstand those pressures to play with the right mindset for the game we're actually in. Leadership is a skill like any other. It's something that we can learn. It's something that we can practice and get good at. And anyone can do it. We all have the capacity to be leaders. That doesn't mean everybody wants to be a leader and that doesn't mean everybody should be a leader, but we all have the capacity. The only or the primary criterion to being a leader is you have to wanna to be one. It's like going to the gym. It requires discipline. It's a lifestyle. Even if you have health and fitness goals, once you achieve those goals, you still have to keep going to the gym for the rest of your life. Leadership is the same thing. We don't become leaders simply to achieve a goal. It's a lifestyle. It's something we have to keep doing all the time. Leadership is not about being in charge. It's about taking care of those in our charge. It's a responsibility. The closest analogy I can offer to being a leader is like being a parent. We are responsible for the lives of other human beings. We want to teach them skills, help them learn their passions, discipline them when necessary, all so that they can grow up and be their best selves and hopefully achieve more than we could have ever achieved ourselves. This is also the joy of leadership, to see our team solve an unsolvable problem, to see them come together and take care of each other without our help. This is the joy of leadership. And ultimately, the better leaders we are, the more those around us thrive and the better the whole organization does. A just cause is a cause so just, we'd be willing to sacrifice for it. It's a vision of an idealized future that does not yet exist that we will commit our lives and our careers to help advance. And though we may never get there, we will die trying. That's the point. It's something bigger than us. And it doesn't mean we have to sacrifice our lives, but sacrifice can come in all shapes and forms. Sometimes it means turning down a better paying job to stay here, or working long hours, or frequent business trips where we're away from our families. We may not like these things, but they feel worth it. They feel worth it because we feel like we're contributing to something bigger than ourselves, this cause that we're working to advance. And having a just cause is absolutely essential if we want to play in the infinite game. An infinite mindset is a re-understanding of how business works. For some reason, people think or feel that business is about short term. It never was. It never should be. It's not about fast growth either. Nowhere does it say that the best companies grow quickly. Usually that comes from the external pressure from investors because they want to see returns on their investments or they put pressure on an organization to sell or go public just so that they can make their money back. But nowhere is it written that you have to grow quickly in order to be successful. 
Um, sometimes it's only our egos. Steady growth, healthy growth. Growth is a dial that we have to adjust so that we build a strong organization. For example, if you're a retail organization and you're obsessed with hyper growth, you want to open as many shops as possible. But what if you're not hiring the right people to work in those shops and you're opening shops so quickly you're not spending enough time training people who are in the front line. Well, guess what? Customers are gonna have a terrible experience. Those people working in those shops won't know how to sell and more of those shops will do poorly and probably close down. In other words, the hyper growth, the obsession with fast growth broke the business. And rather it's better to turn the dial down, maybe open fewer shops, adjust the goals so that we can spend the time to properly recruit, properly train the people who are gonna be working in the shop. As you can see, the goal is to have a mindset for having a strong company, not necessarily a fast growing company. If fast growing happens accidentally, that's great. But if that's the primary goal, we're probably gonna break our companies by accident. Great entrepreneurs are obsessed with building great organizations and they don't have exit plans when they start because if we have an exit plan on the day we start our business, it means we're always looking to end and we're only gonna do the things that are good for now. And that's fine, but let's just be realistic and open about what our ambitions are. True entrepreneurs, great entrepreneurs, the problem solvers, the ones who really invent companies that change the way we live our lives and ultimately the ones that actually succeed for the long term, they have an infinite mindset. There is another guy who does what I do. He writes books, he gives talks. He's very well respected. He does amazingly good work. Um, I hate him. It's nothing personal. He's always been really nice to me when I've met him in professional environments. I just hate him. I don't know why. And because I hate him, I'm really competitive with him. I will regularly go online and check the rankings of my book sales and then immediately check his. I don't check anybody else's just his. And if I'm ahead, I'm really smug. And if I'm behind, I get really angry. I don't know what it is. We had an opportunity to speak together at the same event, and I don't mean me in the morning and him in the afternoon. I mean we spoke together on the same stage at the same time we were interviewed. And the interviewer thought it would be fun if we would introduce each other. And so I went first. And I looked at him and I said, you make me really insecure. All of your strengths are all of my weaknesses, and whenever your name comes up, I get really uncomfortable. He looked at me and he said, funny, I feel the same about you. All of that hatred that I had towards him and all that competitive energy, it had nothing to do with him, it had to do with me. It's because all of his strengths revealed to me all of my weaknesses. And instead of taking a hard look at myself, it was easier to redirect all of that energy against him. Because I could get these small wins and feel better about myself, but at the end of the day, in this infinite game, there's no end. And so there was just this ongoing roll of emotions. A worthy rival is another player in the game worthy of comparison, that their strengths reveal to us our weaknesses. In other words, the places where we can improve upon ourselves. In the infinite game, the goal is not to win, the goal is to get better, to use every day we have to be better versions of ourselves. And changing our mindset away from having competitors other players to be beaten, and rather to adjust that mindset to see those other players as worthy rivals, there to reveal to us our weaknesses so that we may become better versions of ourselves, that is the right mindset for the infinite game. That cathartic experience I had with my worthy rival, I no longer check his book rankings. In fact, we've become close friends. Turns out people can buy more than one book. And at the end of the day, our strengths and weaknesses, because they are opposite, we're actually more powerful working together, and we've actually become great partners as well. So look for your worthy rivals, because they'll help you get better in this game. Leadership is a responsibility. It's the responsibility to see those around us rise. And when things go wrong inside an organization, especially if there's a finite mindset at the root of it, 
the way a finite minded leader fixes those problems is with structure. So let's say there's a scandal or you have performance issues. Usually there's a reorganization or there's a new process put into place, a new system where people have to check more boxes and to ensure that this doesn't happen again. The problem is using structure to fix people, uh, that kind of doesn't work. It doesn't work. When we have human being problems, the way to fix human being problems is with more human beings. In other words, good leadership. And very often the use of structure to help improve human issues is usually lazy leadership. That doesn't mean that the people who are implementing the theme are bad, but we're relying on a process to f help people rather than people to help people. Does it take a special kind of leader to inspire a millennial? No, it takes any kind of leader, somebody who understands the responsibility of leadership. I've heard so many leaders complain that millennials just keep quitting, they won't give you more than 18 months loyalty. Well, think about how they grew up. They grew up in the 80s and 90s. Their worldview of how business exists was watching this time period where layoffs and redundancies became a standard way of doing business, the annual round of layoffs to balance the books. They watched their parents who worked hard and gave their blood, sweat and tears to an organization just get sacked because the company missed its arbitrary projections. It's not a meritocracy. So if companies no longer give us loyalty, why should we give them loyalty? Who can blame millennials? Why should they give their extra if it's not going to count? Why should I go and, and give my best and work late and give you my whole life in one company if you happen to miss an arbitrary projection and poof, I've lost my job? I think organizations need to rethink the cultures they're building. You can't demand loyalty of people if we don't offer loyalty to people. Leaders take the risk to trust. Leaders offer loyalty first. It's the people who get to demand, why should I trust you? Not leaders. Leaders have to trust. That's just how it works. Leaders have to offer loyalty. That's just how it works. And if we see people as, as simply as a line item, something to be balanced at the end of the year, then I think millennials have the right idea. Why should they give loyalty if we don't give them loyalty? But if we start to build strong organizations where we give them something to believe in, something to be a part of, something to advance, we offer them loyalty, we coach them, we offer them leadership training, help them learn mindfulness and become better versions of themselves, they'll stick around because they want to, not because they're told to or paid to, but because they're grateful. Millennials are just human beings. We all want to be treated that way. Remember how they grew up. Remember how they formed their view of business. It's up to us. It's up to the leaders in positions of authority now to change the cultures that are left over from the 80s and 90s. Let's go back to when we trust people and offer them loyalty and hopefully offer them a gold watch at the end of their careers again. And we'll find that millennials will love to be a part of it. Who wouldn't? I had the opportunity to ask the Navy SEALs what kind of people become SEALs, how do they choose? And they drew a graph, two axes. On the x-axis they wrote trust and on the y-axis they wrote performance. They're evaluating people based on performance versus trust. And the way they define those terms is performance is how good are you at your job, your skill set. And trust is what kind of person are you off the battlefield, what's your character? Of course nobody wants a low performer of low trust on their team. Of course everybody wants a high performer of high trust on their team. What the SEALs learned is that a high performer of low trust is a toxic team member. And they would rather have a medium performer of high trust, sometimes even a low performer of high trust, it's a relative scale, over a high performer of low trust. Now this is one of the highest performing organizations in the world and what they show us is that they value trustworthiness even more than skill. Now think about how we evaluate people inside our organizations. We have a million metrics to measure someone's performance and we have minimal to no metrics to measure someone's trustworthiness. In other words, we are accidentally promoting toxic team members in our companies who then become toxic leaders. They're the top performers and we have no way of looking at whether they're actually good for the team. 
And sometimes we know that they're toxic, and when we say, why do you keep them on the team? They're totally uncoachable. You can't even talk to them about how they treat other team members. We shrug and say, I know, but their performance is so good until they do so much damage to the team or just quit because they get a better job offer somewhere else. Our responsibility as leaders is to build great teams, not to promote great heroes within the teams simply because they're high performers at the sacrifice of the rest of the team. Every time it happens where we muster the courage to remove an, a, an uncoachable high performer of low trust, everybody says, what took you so long? And the performance of the rest of the team rises. In other words, we more than make up for whatever performance they offered. If the, one of the highest performing organizations on the planet knows that trust is more, more important than performance, then I think it's about time in business we start thinking the same way. Here's the problem with politics. Winning an election is finite. There's a beginning, there's a middle and end. Winning a position of leadership is finite. There's a beginning, middle and end. And after the choice is made, after the election has happened, there is a winner and there is a loser. The problem is governance is infinite. There's no such thing as winning governing. It is an infinite mindset. And though we may have won our election or though we may have won the leadership seat, we now have to now convert and go to that infinite mindset. And the problem is, is we are very, very good at choosing or electing people who are very, very good at getting elected. The question is, are they good at leading? That's an entirely different skill set. Yes, we need to go through the finite process of picking a leader, but they have to have an infinite mindset if they're going to help us build a nation that is good for all of us for a very, very, very long time. Sometimes those decisions come at short-term sacrifices, but it's for the long-term good. The problem is, is we've all sort of taken on this election and winning attitude for every decision, where we see the other party as a party to be beaten, rather than for us to work together to advance a cause. Unfortunately, we have too much winning and losing in politics, like we have too much winning and losing in business. There's no such thing as winning governing. There's no such thing as winning business. We need more infinite-minded leaders in all aspects of our lives today.